Hi, my name is Philip Matthew. I'm an educator and media professional based in Saco, Maine. I'm actually here in Biddeford, Maine right now, um, and we're going to go explore the tide pools. Um, we're at a Maine Audubon Preserve in Biddeford Pool, um, and there's a whole bunch of cool places to explore, especially at a time like now, which is low tide. So we are here at the first tide pool we're going to check out today. Um, so at my feet, you can see that there's sort of a big pool of water. We've got seaweed growing around it. Uh, there's all kinds of things I can see in there, and we're going to get up close and personal with some of them in just a minute. Uh, but just to reintroduce the idea of what a tide pool is, you just saw that the ocean is out there right now. But if we came back in six hours, I would be entirely underwater, and so would the person operating the camera for me. So right now, because the tide is at low tide, way out there, um, this pool has filled with water and it's all stuck here. It's kind of like a puddle full of ocean water. And that makes it a really cool little environment for different critters to live in because they have their own water, they can move around, they're not worried about fish coming in, they're not worried about big waves crashing on them right now. Um, and they can just sort of get down to the business of living, getting food to eat, all that good stuff. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start to explore which creatures we can find in the tide pool. Um, we might check out some other tide pools as well as we go along. Alright, so this is what the bottom of a tide pool often looks like. You can see there's all kinds of different colors going on. There's a whole bunch of different organisms. I see an urchin right in the center. You can see the little spikes down there. Um, we've got some limpets, we've got some barnacles, we've got some periwinkles, a blue mussel. Um, I think that's all I see right in this spot. Um, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll pull some of them out so you can get a closer look at them as well. So I have here a little tiny baby crab. Um, and I think, I think it's a green crab. Um, it's kind of hard to tell when they're so small because a lot of the features you use to identify things like crabs are also really small and hard to see. Um, but it's, you can see it's, it's tiny. It's maybe the size of my pinky fingernail. And it was just sort of skating around on the bottom of the tide pool. We were actually trying to get to an urchin and we found this little guy. So right here, we have a pretty big sea urchin, at least for the kinds of sea urchins we find here in Maine. You can see it's green. You might be used to seeing like black sea urchins or red sea urchins on TV, um, but most of the ones that we find here in Maine are actually green. And it has sort of a purplish color beneath the green spikes. Sea urchins are really interesting creatures. They actually have these long siphons, and when we put this back down into the water, you'll be able to see it in action. But they're sort of like these long sucker arms, kind of like a vacuum tube or something like that. And that's all they use to move. They don't have legs, they don't have flippers or anything like that. And I can, oh my gosh, I can actually feel it moving on my hand, which is kind of wild. Can you see any of them under there? If I hold really still, you might be able to see that some of those points are actually moving and the urchin is moving in my hand. Now I'm going to flip him over for a second just so you can see what it looks like on the bottom. So that is the sea urchin's mouth and it's actually something we call an Aristotle's lantern. That's the name for the organ. Um, you can see it's got a tiny little almost star-shaped opening with five little spikes uh, that open and close. And that's how it takes its food in. It's also how it gets its waste out of its body. So it's sort of a, a one-stop shop. Works for both, both parts of the activity. I'm gonna put this guy back underwater, but before I did, I wanted to just show you just how small these are. The smallest little sea urchins you can find are often tiny, tiny little green spiky guys. Um, and they start off even smaller than that. They hatch from eggs and then they grow and they get bigger and bigger. And by the time they get to an adult, they are usually about this big. So now that we've put him back in the water, you can see in addition to spikes, sea urchins have those long tube arms that basically reach out and they find things nearby and they suction on and then they slowly move their way around. Um, and that's why you often find sea urchins sort of wedged down in little cracks down at the bottom of the tide pool because they're able to use their suction arms to pull themselves in really tight. And then later when the waves come back, they'll be nice and safe and secure. So I've got two different creatures here that are easy to find at the tide pools. 
In my right hand, I have a common periwinkle, and in my left hand, I have a dog whelk. And they might look pretty similar from far away, but if we get up close, we can start to notice some differences. So the periwinkle in my right hand is a lot more rounded. It does have a point up here, but if I look at the bottom side, it's a really smooth shell. It might almost look like a shell you just stumble into at the beach and think, oh, it's a shell. But it's a smooth periwinkle shell, or a, a common periwinkle shell. On the other hand, the dog whelk has this point at the bottom of his shell, and he's actually attached to me right now. You can see him starting to peek out. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there we go, hanging on. Um, and both of these, the periwinkle and the dog whelk, will just sort of move along, they, they'll go along the, the, the surface of the tide pool, eating algae and things growing on the rocks, um, and just sort of living their lives. The other thing you'll notice about the dog whelk, it's got that sort of spiral shape. And if I gently take him off of me, you can see it's almost like a conch shell or something like that, but much, much smaller with a really clear spiral. Um, and you can see its, it's foot in there. You also might notice there's sort of a dark brown thing. That's actually like a door. So when the, when the dog whelk has to protect itself and it goes inside its shell, it'll shut that little thing closed like a door um, and then be more protected from someone that might come along and try to eat it. So that's two of our mollusks that we can find here at the tide pools. I'm gonna to try to find a limpet too and we'll talk about that next. So, I have in my hand here a limpet. Limpets are really cool because if you flip their shell over, you can actually see the whole limpet, more or less. The shell's in a cone shape, and so it's pretty easy to see everything underneath it if you can get them off the rock. Um, and what I want to draw your attention to right now is that big, flat foot. That's what it uses to move along the surface of the rock. And it's actually very sensitive. If I hold out my finger next to it, it's gonna reach for my finger because it wants to try to get reattached. Remember, this little guy is making sure it's not getting lost in the waves. It's probably confused about what's going on. If I hold my finger out to it, you can see it moving, reaching upward, trying to find its way to the rock. In this case, my finger, not a rock, but, but that's sort of its defense and it wants to make sure that it can suck right on and stay attached to the rock and safe and secure. So unfortunately it's starting to rain, so we're gonna have to cut our trip a little bit short, but I just wanted to quickly point out a couple other creatures. Right here we have a whole bunch of tiny little blue mussels. Uh, and all of these mussels are just latched onto the rock uh, using their bissel threads, these special organs that sort of reach into the crevices of the rock and hold on really tight. Um, but you can see there's so many of them, and they're all really small. These aren't mussels that are gonna get really big and be something that you would wanna harvest and eat, um, but they are really important because they are filter feeders. So they suck in water, they filter out little pieces of things that are floating in the water, and they eat those and let the rest of the water out. And that has an incredible ability to clean out our water. It's actually really important for making sure that the water that we get on the beaches, the water that other fish and animals rely on to make sure that that water is clean and healthy. It's also the reason though that you have to be careful about shellfish, especially in parts of Maine where there might be um, different chemicals or things like that in the water because these are filter feeders. So if there's something bad in the water, they end up with it in their system. And even if it doesn't kill them, it might not be safe to eat. So thanks for coming explore the tide pools with me. I hope you get a chance to come explore some tide pools yourself soon. Um, we're in Biddeford, Maine right now, so that's maybe 30 minutes depending where you live um, away, and it's a really cool, a really cool spot to come and check out and look for some marine organisms.